I thought what I would do today in honor of this long, long waiting game is do a little story time about the time when I was accepted into genetic counseling graduate school. Welcome to Genetic Counseling Awareness Channel with Katie Lee. All the best resources you'll ever need at Genetic Counseling Awareness Channel. Hi everyone, it's me, Katie Lee CGC, and today is Wannabe Wednesday. Welcome back to my channel. I sincerely hope that everyone who had to submit their rank order lists uh, feels good about their decisions and I am just there with you while you are waiting for those match results. I thought what I would do today in honor of this long, long waiting game is do a little story time about the time when I was accepted into genetic counseling graduate school. I even went and found my scrapbook and found my acceptance letter, so I'll show you that in a second. But I thought I would kind of just talk about what the process looked like for me when I was applying. So I was applying um, I submitted all of my applications in the winter of 2012. They were still mostly due in December or really early January. And I submitted applications to IU, University of Wisconsin-Madison, University of Minnesota, um, University of Colorado, and Stanford. At that time, I was living in Mountain View, California, which is right by Stanford, with my boyfriend, who is now my husband, and I was working as a crisis support counselor um, in Mountain, well actually in San Jose. The way I chose those schools to apply to is that um, University of Wisconsin was very inexpensive. University of Minnesota was relatively inexpensive and would have been close to home for me, my dad, and the majority of my family and friends live in Wisconsin around Milwaukee or Madison. Minnesota is a relatively short drive from Milwaukee area. So that's how I picked those two schools. Indiana was also really inexpensive, so I picked that one and it was in the Midwest, so a short flight to get home. Colorado was really a wild card. I had a acquaintance from undergrad named Laura who ended up at the University of Colorado program and had good things to say about it. So I had stayed connected with her because she was one year ahead of me, you know, in school at the time when I was applying and only really applied because Colorado seemed like an okay place to live, getting a little bit closer to the Midwest and Laura had good things to say about the program. So that's why I applied there. And then Stanford was easy. My husband is from the Bay Area. He really wanted to stay in the Bay Area. He was really happy with his job at the time at Sandus, which was there. So I applied to Stanford. And looking back, like it was not until a few months after my applications were submitted that I realized the Stanislaw program was a thing and it was not in the middle of nowhere. So that was just an error on my 22 year old self's part that I had no idea that I should have probably applied to that program too if I wanted to stay in the Bay Area. Now I wish I could find my notes from my interviews and what my initial impressions were. I'm going to try to remember to the best of my abilities. I know that my first interviews, I did not get an interview at Indiana, I got an interview at the rest. And my first were Minnesota and Wisconsin. And I went when it was very cold and snowy in both, which was no problem for me because I'm from the Midwest, it didn't scare me away. What I remember about my Wisconsin interview was, it was so fun to see all of my friends. It was right after St. Patrick's Day, so I got to go home, see friends, do a St. Patrick's Day bar crawl in Milwaukee before the interview, and then stay with some friends in Madison, except for the night before the interview, I decided to stay with my grandma because I didn't think I would, you know, maybe go to bed at a reasonable time if I stayed with friends. So stayed with my grandma, drove down to campus, and had the interview. The interview was what I expected it to be. I had met genetic counseling grad students from Madison while I was there for undergrad because I had one as a TA, met another of her friends to talk to them about the program, and I knew the program director and some of the faculty just from expressing an interest in the program. So it was run of the mill. I would have been very happy to go there. Again, the cost was really good, which was a big consideration for me. Minnesota felt similar. I felt like my interviews went really well. I really liked the program. I liked that the program had a little bit more of a psychosocial focus. I thought that I would fit in well with the faculty and I enjoyed meeting the current students. So I had good feelings about Minnesota too. Colorado was my third interview, I believe. I had been to Denver before when my friend and I drove 
from Wisconsin to California to move me out there. But I hadn't ever thought much about the campus because at the time we drove, I was not applying, planning to apply to that school. And I was really, really sad to learn that the campus was out in Aurora. It was like 30 minutes away from downtown Denver. And I really wanted to live in a city with like some hustle and bustle and good restaurants and, you know, lots of things to do. So I was a little bit disappointed about that, but I did learn that one of the students still lived downtown anyways and commuted. So I figured that would be what I would do if I ended up there. My interviews went okay. I didn't feel like they went great. I didn't feel a close connection with any of the faculty. The program itself sounded pretty good to me. I liked that the Colorado program, like Wisconsin and Minnesota, it was in a big medical center. Um, they have a metabolic rotation, 10 week rotation for students, which is a little bit unique because they have a big children's or pediatric metabolic department. And I was pretty interested in working with kids at the time. So I thought that sounded cool. And again, I had that classmate, Laura, who was currently a first year, who was able to give me a little bit of inside scoop and said that the program was going well for her. And then my last interview was Stanford. I interviewed there in the last round of interviews. So I believe it was like mid April when I interviewed there or so. And I was wowed. I was like, I had never been on the Stanford campus, even though we lived really close to it. I guess I have no reason to go, but I was blown away. I mean, the campus was beautiful. I interviewed on a really nice day and I thought I had really good conversations with the majority of the faculty and the program director at the time. Stanford was incredibly expensive, incredibly expensive, but it had these other things going for it. Like the program sounded amazing and my husband did not want to leave California. He wanted to stay. If I chose to go to a program in the Midwest, potentially he wasn't necessarily going to come unless he got a job opportunity that he was excited about. And that was fine. We talked about it all through the application process. I mean, this was something we were planning for for years. So I knew that going in and I knew we could get through two years long distance if that's what it took, but it would have just been, you know, the icing on the cake to be able to stay at our same apartment. He could keep his same job. I could keep my same part-time job. Now, one of the downfalls is I really did not like living in the Bay Area. I did not like it at all. So I didn't really want to stay there except for him and for Stanford. So I think if I would have matched, I probably would have put Stanford first, even though it was incredibly expensive. And I'm so glad I didn't end up going there because of the debt I would have had. Back in 2013, there was no ranking list. What the plan was, was that on a specific date, a Monday, Sometime in April, I believe you were going to get phone calls from somebody at each of the programs. Certainly you get a phone call if you were accepted into a program or you might get emails to say that you've been waitlisted or you, there is no space for you at their program or you might get a phone call that says one of those things. And it like ran the whole week. So at the beginning of the week, you know, each program calls their six top applicants or their 10 or their 15 top applicants and offers them positions. But at the same time, these applicants are also getting offers from other schools and they have to decide very quickly which school they will choose to go to, notify that school and then notify the other so they can keep making their way down their wait list until they fill their class. So on Monday, I got phone calls or emails from all of the schools and I got waitlisted at Madison, Minnesota and Colorado and I got rejected from Stanford. I did not take off work that day because to be honest, my coworkers, they did not understand much about the whole genetic counseling graduate school application process and they weren't in my business. I was like, I'll just let you know when I get in, if I get in or if I'm going to be here longer than a year. And they totally got that. So nobody was like jockeying me like, when are you going to find out? When are you going to find out? No. So they had no idea what was going on and I preferred it that way because it was just going to be too much pressure after all of that hard work that went into it. I remember being disappointed and being like, well, this might not be my year. What am I going to do next? I was not sure if I was going to stick with genetic counseling graduate school if I didn't get in. In fact, I was leaning towards just applying to a different type of graduate program or maybe applying to genetic counseling and something else the following year. So my wheels were just spinning. Um, I followed up at that time. You could follow up with the programs and you could ask like, where am I on the wait list? what do you think the chances are? And I'm sure they got so many of those annoying emails from all of us who were like, oh, 
what's going to happen. So I was sending those annoying emails to Madison, Minnesota and Colorado and just nervous. Then I can't remember the day, but I want to say it was on Wednesday. So two days after the initial match results went out that I got an offer from Carol, the program director at Colorado. She said, you are next on the wait list and we'd love to have you at the program. And maybe it was actually Thursday because I think it was the last day that you would potentially get offers. I don't really remember exactly how the timing all works, but I think everything needed to be sorted out by the end of that same week. So I was like, oh, let me think about it. But really, yes, yes, I accept. Uh, I'd be happy to go there. I remember feeling excited, but also disappointed because I didn't know if my boyfriend was going to come and it wasn't the program I was most excited about, but I was glad I got into a program after all of that hard work and it wasn't wasted. That's what I remember. My sister-in-law who knew, had heard me complaining, you know, for months about the whole process, brought me a nothing but cake and some balloons and we celebrated and that was it. And here we go, I found my congratulations on your acceptance into the graduate school and the genetic counseling program at the University of Colorado Denver Anschutz Medical Campus beginning fall 2013. Letter and me and my husband moving to Colorado. Um, so that was it. My boyfriend ended up moving with me after all. I spent the summer working as much as possible. In fact, that whole year I'd been working a full-time job as a crisis support service counselor from like, I think my hours were six till two, and then I would drive to a babysitting job and I picked up some really wonderful girls from school and babysat them from like, I think it was three till 6.30 or so. So I just kept on doing that. I was trying to save as much money as possible for grad school. My boyfriend, now husband, ended up being pretty open to Colorado. He had a couple friends who had moved to Denver after college and he ended up interviewing for some jobs. He got the first job he interviewed for and he said, okay, I'm moving too. So it ended up working out great. We moved, I think in the middle of August and the program started the last week of August. It was really nice because his company paid for our move, which was lovely. And we found an apartment downtown, which was what we both wanted and really enjoyed living in Denver so much that we are still living just outside of Denver. As my kind of match of the Colorado program sunk in, I saw all of the perks of it and I was less disappointed about not being closer to family and friends with Madison and Minnesota and definitely I wasn't, ex I wasn't disappointed at all after a few months about not being at Stanford. And now looking back, I can say, I am so glad I went to this program. I mean, it's what led us to Colorado, which is such a great place for my family and I'm so happy I happened upon it just by chance, just by the cards I was dealt. As far as the program itself and the faculty, I actually ended up getting along fantastic with the faculty. The program was great. I learned everything that I needed to become a successful genetic counselor. So even though it might've been bottom of my list, had I submitted a ranking order, I'm really happy with where I ended up. And I hope that's the case for each of you. If you get a match result that feels a little bit disappointing, that's okay. It's okay to be disappointed. It's okay to dream about where you would have ideally seen yourself or what would have been easier for logistics or had a better cost of living or closer to home. But ultimately, I think most of the genetic counseling programs, if not all of them, are great. They are going to prepare you to be an excellent genetic counselor and you are going to be surrounded by people who also have a passion for genetic counseling. So you will likely find friends and colleagues that you enjoy being around. That's it, that's my story time on genetic counseling graduate school and how I ended up at the University of Colorado. If you have any questions for me about the Colorado program or about anything, just let me know down below. I'm thinking of all of you guys. I really hope you hang in there while you are waiting for these results to come back. All right, take care.